Welcome to this instructional video from WHW. Today we will be covering the use of Centribase Cold Cure Pourable Acrylic. I will use this complete over complete or full full denture wax up to demonstrate how quick, clean and easy this system is. In this case I'm processing on the master models so I've split mounted them. It's very important that your models are trimmed to be 90 degrees to the base and have a fairly wide land area, at least 3 to 4 millimetres, ideally 5 millimetres. The dentures also need to be sealed down around the periphery, exactly the same as traditional flasking. So the next stage is to add three wax channels onto the posterior section of the denture to allow the acrylic to pour in and allow air to escape. So here we're using customised flasks. So I will plan for the wax sprues to emerge from the rear of the model, lining up with the three holes, and they will need to butt up against these bungs. The lower will be exactly the same, but the centre sprue will come from the lingual floor and two short sprues from the heels. So you can now see where I've added the wax for the central pore channel and the two air channels. I've just used standard pink wax which I've rolled up to create a sprue minimum 6mm in diameter. Check that your model sits roughly in the centre of the flask base and that your sprues line up with the pore holes. When you put your bung on you may find there's a slight gap, that doesn't matter, you can remove the silicon later. Notice with this lower it has one heel that's slightly too high for the hole in the flask so I've come round the side for the air channel. So the next stage is to pour the silicon into the flasks. Here I'm using Sentry Duplica 12 from WHW. Uh, note at this stage that if you are using agar you wouldn't have pour channels onto the dentures, you would cut those manually later. But the agar will need to be a very strong one that reproduces detail very, very well. Pull the duplica in from a height of 30 centimetres. These flasks hold about 250 to 300 mils of duplica, depending on the model size. Once the silica has set, with this one it's quite quick, it's about 16 minutes, you can open the flasks and remove the models. So the next stage, once you've removed the models from the silica, is to clear out any of the sprues that have broken off. Open up any of the holes that have been covered by a bit of silicon with a pair of scissors or a scalpel. And boil out the models, popping all the teeth off and keeping them in the right order. Once the pore channels have been opened up and you're sure there's no loose silicon and the flask has been boiled out and cleaned thoroughly, you can do the same with the model, making sure it's thoroughly clean, and the same with the teeth. I tend to just do a few teeth at a time to avoid mixing them up and use these tea strainers. This is a good time to roughen the teeth or add holes 
or channels uh, to provide extra mechanical retention. Then you'll need to carefully replace the teeth back in their location. The casts then need to be soaked until they're thoroughly saturated and not producing any air bubbles. Once the models have been well saturated, give them a very brief airline and then paint them with plaster separating medium. Once your separating medium is dried, you can reassemble the flask. It's always a good idea just to do a last check that the teeth are all in the right place. We're now ready to mix up the acrylic and pour. So I've measured out the powder and liquid according to the manufacturer's instruction. Before you pour the acrylic it's worth adding a little bit of petroleum jelly to the back of the flasks just in case you miss as the acrylic sticks really well to plastic. Flasks on their backs, and you pour the acrylic in a thin, steady stream into the center channel. And you keep going until you see the acrylic appear in the two air holes. You can see how quickly it starts to lose its pouring quality so you have to work quite fast. Slight rock helps to get rid of any air bubbles. So place your poured flasks into your hydro flask. Don't submerge them but try to get the water level about the same height as the back of the flask and then process for about 20 minutes at 40 to 50 degrees C water at about 5 to 6 bar pressure. So here we can see I've popped both the dentures out of their silicon moulds. You can see how cleanly they come out. So you hardly have any work to do from this stage. Um, the beauty of using the silicon is the mould has survived. So if you make a note of the teeth you've used and preserve a model, you can make proper duplicate dentures for the patient now as a spare set or in years to come. So we've now got to remove the channels. I favour a tri-cutter for this, but any acrylic burr will work. <laughs> So after removal of the sprues so we can get the model back on the articulator, 
just check that your pin is down and check your occlusal contacts before a very brief bit of final trimming and polishing. So after light trimming with a fine tungsten burr and normal pumice and polish, your finished items should look like this. After the final polish, I've used Protho-Clean on these dentures, which improves the final lustre and contains mint oil. Also worth considering is Aqueous Sport, which is a gum shield disinfectant, but it can actually be used on all removable appliances.